with creativity, I think, that we need. So that's, if we want to offer this to our children, we need to come up with ways to let children play with us and let's play with them. So I've, I've committed my career now, I'm 60 this year, to product design. And I'm moving ahead with that. I'll be doing large city work for the Chinese. I'm advising the Chinese government at the ministerial level. And we're looking at a world of good, not less bad. Because if all we measure is things like carbon and say our goal is zero, and we want to come down to zero and reduce something, we haven't told the world what we want to do. We could still be nuclear or something on the energy front. So what Michael and I say is, here's the world. And if this is zero, well then, Let's reduce our carbon, but put it in the area where, of the things we don't want. And then we go there, you see, towards zero, and it's a good trajectory. So we love efficiency, sure. This is called demand side management. Use as little as you need, you know, of course. And I knew uh, W. Edwards Deming before he died, and he created total quality management, but it's also Six Sigma, and, you know, you're perfecting things, and fine. But then let's also set what it is we want as an outside goal. And let's push our trajectory toward that goal, right? So we have be less bad, be more good. But it's all good. It's, it's all directional. If all you're doing is being less bad, then you'll get to the point of insufficiency, where, where you've only uh, used as little of the things you don't like, but everything else is, is undefined. So let's have a defined system and have some fun with it. So I'm going to coin a new term today, I think. I've looked it up, and I haven't found it anywhere. But... I was reading Hernando de Soto's work from Peru about the issue of capital formation among the super poor. And, and it's a big issue around the world. So I'm designing now. Uh, one half of what I do is for the wealthiest people in the world. Obviously, I get to design campuses for people like Google and companies like this. But I also get to design on my own volition and my own economics. I get to design products for people who have nothing. I just do it because it's what I must do. I'm a designer. And I am now designing products for people who have nothing. And you would not believe what, it, what happens when you design for people with nothing. You don't think of them as the bottom of the pyramid. I find that insulting. I think that people everywhere deserve clean water. I think people everywhere deserve good design. So I'm designing for the people who have nothing and the people who have everything. And it turns out those two things are beautifully connected. And if you design for people with nothing, you, can, you are designing for people with everything because you can convert the things that you come up with that become free uh, in our society and, and don't present liabilities and just assets for people with nothing. And you can convert these things into beautiful things where people have everything to celebrate and enjoy. I'm designing a lamp right now that can be made out of scraps from modern society, things we call, you know, liabilities and waste and all that. But we can make a beautiful thing with it. And it turns out I can also make that beautiful thing out of really precious materials too. Or highly crafted materials that give value to appearance and make them attractive for people who have everything. Uh, and they choose to have this as well because they think it's beautiful. Why not? So I think that's the point of my talk today is if Hernando de Soto tells us that currency, money, is, it comes and goes, well, clearly it does. If we look at the word currency, it's current. It's here, and then it's gone. It flows like water. So Wall Street is dealing with currency. Everybody out there, they're just dealing with the flow of numbers. And when Warren Buffett was asked why he didn't invest in derivatives, a financial instrument based on metrics and, you know, securitizing uh, assets apparently with, with processes so removing of them from their real value that they were inexplicable to him. And when asked why he didn't invest in derivatives, his answer was, why would I invest in something I don't understand? Think about that. So if currency comes and goes, it would be like saying, I had a goat and I ate it. The goat became currency. But if I, if I think about goats, and I lived with the Bedouin in Jordan in 1973 before the war started up again, and I lived in a Bedouin tent, and my tent was made with wool. 
and it was the color of a goat. And the goats wandered around behind us as we moved around. And they ate everything we couldn't. And it was solar powered, obviously, it was the weeds and whatnot. And, and they gave us wool and hides and flesh and butter and milk and cheese. And, and their little, the little goats were, you know, beautiful and played with the children. So they were companions. I mean, it's amazing how many things those goats were doing while they fertilized the desert. And, and, and yet there was our little factory from nature that was being used by humans as a tool. And it was a companion. And we were in symbiosis. And if we had more than one goat and you made sure you just didn't eat up your goats, you had capital. Cap, head, Latin. Capital comes from heads of animals, for example. That means you have capital. So we have currency. If you have one goat and eat it, it's come and it's gone. And you're destitute. If we have capital, if we have our reserves, if we have our ancient stored solar income, carbon in the earth as residues for fantastic reuse for pharmaceuticals or, or for uh, things that we need in emergencies and so on. This is our capital. It's like having herds of animals. And if we do an economy that honors recapitalization, rather than just the flow of currency. It could then honor a concept that I'd like to create called recurrency. Currency anew. So we can take currency today, but instead of throwing it away, we can convert it into capital, which is currency with potential. It's currency at work. And we can then convert that capital into recurrency through cradle-to-cradle thinking, and it reoccurs. And then we can recapitalize it in use cycles and intelligent material pools. And then we can put it back into recurrency, etc. So let us allow the world to join the celebration of recurrency, and, and let's do things for many generations that cycle through and offer children hope for the future. And so that's what I do today. I simply am designing things. Michael is focusing on the chemistry and the systems, and it's a very exciting moment. And I've just decided personally to take on the products themselves. So I'm working on new shoes, new water bottles, new this, new that. It's a very exciting time, and new cities. And, um, and I just wish I could be with you, but I'm acting like an NGO as a business, and I'm here for you, but I'm actually here for my children. And thank you for letting me do it this way. Please don't be upset that I couldn't calm myself. I'm doing the best I can.